Jen Hatmaker says that Christians should judge certain doctrines or teachings based on the fruit they produce in people's lives. But is this what Jesus meant when he said, you will recognize them by their fruits? In 2016, Jen Hatmaker became arguably the highest profile self-proclaimed evangelical to affirm same-sex marriage and relationships. About a year later, she went on a podcast called The Bible for Normal People, hosted by Peter Enns. When he asked her what was the key thing that caused her to change her mind, she referenced Jesus' teaching on fruit. She said this, When there's something, be it a person, a relationship, or a doctrine, that feels ambiguous, or it feels contentious, or there's tension around its interpretation, look to the fruit. The fruit's going to tell you the truth. Then she went on to say that the fruit of the tree is rotten, meaning the non-affirming tree. In other words, churches that don't affirm same-sex marriage and relationships. So according to Jen Hatmaker, bad fruit equals bad feelings. Matthew Vines, author of God and the Gay Christian, holds this view as well. He calls it Jesus' test, and he says it's simple, and then he quotes Jesus. If a tree bears bad fruit, it can't be a good tree. If a tree bears good fruit, it can't be a bad tree. So all this language about good fruit and bad fruit, good trees and bad trees, can be found in Matthew chapter 7, the famous chapter where Jesus talks about not judging and who are his true followers. So let's take a look at this verse in context. In Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse 15, Jesus says this, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Jesus continues, Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, you will recognize them by their fruits. Jesus taught that good fruit means obedience to his commands, and bad fruit means immoral behavior. This will become more clear as we continue in the chapter. Starting in verse 21, Jesus says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. In context, we need to understand what that word lawlessness actually meant. Lawlessness is in reference to God's law. In the Old Testament, God had a covenantal relationship with Israel in which they had to fulfill certain ceremonial and purity laws. These were always meant to be temporary in anticipation of the new covenant that would be fulfilled in Christ. God did not hold the surrounding nations accountable to those specific laws, but God's moral law, the law that's based on his nature and character, the law that has to do with good and evil, is not temporary and it doesn't change because God does not change. God did hold the surrounding nations to this law and judged them based on their obedience to it or their rebellion against it. God's moral law is universal. It's binding on all people of all times. And so when Jesus refers to workers of lawlessness, he's referring to people who do moral evil, those who break his moral law. Jesus connects bearing good fruit with keeping his commandments in John 15, 8. He says this, By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you abide in my love. In Matthew chapter 3, John the Baptist called the Pharisees and Sadducees a brood of vipers. He said, Who warned you to flee the wrath to come? Bear fruit in keeping with repentance. Once again, Scripture connects bearing good fruit with obedience and repentance. Good fruit means obedience, and bad fruit means sin. If we need any further proof, let's take a look at the Greek word that's translated into English as bad in reference to bad fruit. 
The word bad here is translated from the Greek word paneros, and it has a moral connotation. It means wicked or evil. So if we put that together, bad fruit literally means immoral behavior. It's ironic that the context within which Jesus says you will recognize them by their fruits isn't about teachings or doctrines. He's talking about people, specifically false teachers. Any teacher who promotes immoral behavior is a false teacher, according to Jesus. And about those trees bearing fruit, although a tree can be beautiful and attractive and it can produce all the good feelings and make you feel wonderful, it can still bear bad fruit if it's teaching you to break God's law.